what I intend to present today is basically how the threat landscape in South Asia has altered after the emergence of ISIS and more importantly after the emergence of AQIS. As we look at the terrorist threat in the region, we had a whole period after 9-11, which is commonly referred to as the post-9-11 phase. And I would like to categorize the period since 2014 as the post-ISIS phase. South Asia is still coming to terms with what it means to have such a major resurgence of global terrorism once again. Because as we know, after 2011, after Osama bin Laden was killed, everybody thought that the threat of terrorism is going to dissipate globally. But now with the emergence of ISIS and the huge number of incidents that have taken place internationally, the threat of terrorism is once again clear and present danger for everybody. But as we talk about uh, ISIS, I think it's also important to remember that the groups which are already operating in South Asia, such as the Taliban in Pakistan, lashkar e -Tayyaba, and some of the other organizations in various countries are equally active and are also carrying out a large number of brutal terrorist attacks. The attack by the Taliban on the school in Peshawar in Pakistan is a very clear case in point in this regard. It is also important for us to remember that while South Asia faces a serious challenge from terrorist groups, there is also a significant threat from extremist organizations such as Hizbut Tahrir and the like, which may not be classified as a terrorist organization per se because they're not involved in any direct terrorist acts, but the sort of ideology that they profess and the sort of strategic communication that they're currently undertaking makes them a threat to the states and societies as well. So as South Asian states come to terms with this new threat, the threat that has re-emerged with renewed vigor, I think it's important for South Asian states and societies to look at a few important pointers. Firstly, the issue of cyberspace. More increasingly, these terrorist and extremist organizations are taking their message to the cyber domain and social media. If we look at the country that I come from, Bangladesh, we see that uh, groups are increasingly using social media platforms to propagate their message. So there is a much lesser degree of reliance on leaflets or printed modes of communication and more emphasis on the use of social media. So unless the state is able to craft a good counter message that also is populated through social media, it will be very difficult for us to counter the problem in the cyber domain. So I think the issue of cybersecurity and its interplay with global terrorism is something that we need to seriously look at. The other uh, big factor that we need to keep in mind as the international forces withdraw from Afghanistan and as the Taliban becomes more resurgent in Afghanistan, what sort of impact will it have on the South Asian terrorist threat scenario? So far we see that the Taliban have been kept at bay and various initiatives taken by the international community and the United States have ensured that a resurgence of Taliban is checked. But in the event such a resurgence takes place, we might see a much more emboldened terrorist threat scenario in South Asia, which the South Asian states need to contend with. ISIS has so far kept itself confined to its main sphere of influence, that is the Levant and parts of uh, Middle East and parts of Central Asia. But that doesn't mean that ISIS is not going to shift its focus to South Asia in the future. There are already several cases in South Asia where ISIS has tried to recruit people from the region. So I think it is very important for South Asian states to keep in mind that the threat from ISIS looms very large. More than anything else, even if it doesn't manifest itself in operational terms, the symbolism of some of the things that ISIS is trying to do and the historical revisionism that it preaches is something that South Asian states and the counterterrorism response community needs to keep in mind. The other big factor in 
as we look at this new threat in South Asia and what needs to be done about it, that ultimately it's an ideational struggle. So just by using kinetic measures or operational counterterrorism strategies, it is not going to ultimately succeed in stemming the tide of radical thought. So the states need to work together with the communities in crafting proper counter-narratives so that the negative ideas propagated by the likes of ISIS and EQIS can be properly thwarted. At the end of the day, we need to remember that this, we are waging a long war. By killing important terrorist personalities or by degrading the operational capability of one group, we will be able to make an important dent, but we will not be able to completely extinguish the threat. The reality of life that we have in the South Asian region and elsewhere is that this threat is a long-term one and therefore we need to be prepared to undertake long-term strategic countermeasures and not just purely operational ones.